first things that I would look at if I was having, let's say, performance problems on in an environment is I would go and check the, the overall health of the storage array. So how do you do that? You go and you look at um, performance data generated by the, the SPs. So a few things that I would look at would be SP utilization. You want to make sure that your storage processors uh, or each storage processor is not being more than 50% utilized. Well, why only 50%? The reason I say that is because they're meant to be redundant SPs. So if one SP were to fail, you want to ensure that the other SP has enough uh, capacity or, or, or CPU cycles on it to be able to take on the load from the other SP in the event of a failure. Um, another thing that you would consider would be you know, cache utilization. Take a look at the, uh, the, the dirty pages on the storage processors and take a look and see if, if it's being overutilized. In a storage array, especially on VNXs, you can, you can run into a situation that's called forced flushing. Basically what this means is that the SP cache is at 100%. When this happens, the storage array basically tells all of your systems that I'm not going to take any more IOs until I can dump some of this cache down to disk. When you've got an environment, let's say, you know, that's, that's, that's high I.O. utilization, but it's on the wrong type of disks. For example, I've got an Oracle database that is writing data files to SATA disks. So in, in this situation, your SATA disk is not able to keep up with the transactions coming from the database you know, roughly between 70 to 85 IOPS. And if you've got a RAID group that, you know, of let's say eight disks, you know, after your RAID calculations and everything over, you only have a specific subset of IOPS that you can actually use. And if your database is, you know, an OLTP type database where it's constantly hammering the disks, then the RAID group will not be able to keep up with the amount of writes coming in from the host. The storage array will then take, you know, the majority of those writes, and it'll write it into cache. So, so that way, the the system is allowed to continue working, and the array is saying, "I'm going to load this into cache, and I'm going to dump it into disk." I get free cycles. So, if you run into an environment like this, what can happen is that your cache will quickly fill up. Once the cache is filled up, your array will hit what is called forced flushing. During this time. The, the storage processor will no longer accept any more writes into cache until it can dump those dirty pages down into the disks. So you'll have situations where basically the SP cache is unable to keep up with the amount of writes coming in from the host and write them to the disks in a timely fashion. This can be very detrimental to performance on your system and it, it can cause outages. So one thing, so that would be a thing to look at. Is my cache being heavily utilized? If so, why? Which environment is, you know, is, is basically writing to the wrong type of disks? And then once you identify that environment, you can, you can make strides to moving it to faster spindles. So in that example, if I were to move those data files or, or, or those LUNs for that Oracle database from a SATA tier to a fiber channel tier, that will, that will reduce the cache hit rate on my storage processor and it will increase overall performance on the system. You can move it to a different type of disk like in our previous example or you can add additional spindles into the, the pool that that system resides in. So, you know, back into the previous example, Let's say you know that that environment is on fiber channel disks, but you know the the amount of fiber channel disks that I have in that pool is not sufficient to give the amount of IOPS that I need. So you can add additional disks, which will give you additional spindles, and it'll distribute that throughput across the additional spindles, and it'll give you the performance that you need. Another option you can do, which is becoming fairly popular this day, is you add a EFD tier to your to your storage array. So what is EFD? They're, they're solid state disks that act as another layer of cache for your system. So VNXs have what is called fast cache. 
and you can add, I think, you know, up to, I don't know, six, five to ten discs into this fast cache tier, and it basically acts as another layer to be able to handle any type of burst I.O. coming from your storage system. So let's say your sustained I.O. is, you know, something that, you know, your SATA tier can handle or your SAS tier can handle. But every now and then, you'll have, you know, an event where you've got some burst IOPS and you just see it, you know, you see, you see some peaks in your, in your, your performance logs. Well, having that EFD tier there will give the array that sort of wiggle room that it needs to be able to handle that, you know, that I.O. event to, to where you're not having, you know, an array-wide performance issue. Thank you.